Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today, I'm going to talk about store cards and credit cards, another bolo I look for all the time. It's not one you're going to find very often at all, but when you do, it's usually a really good score, no matter what it is. Um, store cards are cards that were issued, say, in 1910, 20s, 30s, 40s, even up into the 50s and 60s for specific companies like a employee charge card of sorts or a customer charge card. Usually, it has a couple digits um, for a number for the account on bigger stores stores, there might be four digits for the account number. Very generic, uh, some are on metal, just like some of the earlier charge cards. Charge cards in general, uh, they're very collectible. You're just not going to run into them very often at all. Most people destroy the old ones, so that's why we just don't find many. But I always, always look for them, especially at estate sales and auctions. But we're going to wear the screen and talk about them right now. Uh, so today we're going to talk about charge cards. They have their origins all the way back to when stores issued their own little like uh, put it on my account type of card. That's where these started to come from. Banks took on to this and, and started to produce their own as well too. Some of the earlier ones can sell for a ton of money. Here's a specific uh, example right here. This is a little booklet actually for one. Um, I don't yeah, it's actually on the cover here as well, too. So it's a booklet and uh, charge card all in one. This is a perfect example. I believe this is probably the very first diners club that was ever uh, issued. And, you know, they went along with companies in many aspects of it, too. So this one went for $2,000. I have never seen a booklet until I saw this one. And I do look for this type of stuff occasionally. Usually it's just cards. This is really early for the diners club. They turned into plastic in, I think, 59 or 58 or somewhere in that range. But this one's over $2,000 dollars for this little booklet. This is one of those little tiny pieces of paper, a little booklet that most people would pass up and not think a single thing of. Just like the charge cards themselves when they find old wallets and storage units and garage sales, flea markets, wherever you find stuff at auctions as well, these sell incredibly well. This one here went for $703. It's the 1959. It's the first basic plastic credit card uh, zero, zero, 001, first series, first everything. Really nice early one, too. So it's a good amount of money for something like this. And it's not even cracked, which is the remarkable part that it was taken care of. Now again, people just think this is junk and there's nothing you can do with them and they'll trash them out. Even from the 70s and 80s, some of these carry value. And we're going to go up and you're going to see quite a few different ones. Here's Bank AmeriCard. Basically, Bank of America, if I'm not mistaken. This is like one of the earlier, yeah, Bank of America. This is one of the early ones, 1961. Low numbers, as you see. Just an early, scarce item. It even says credit card on it. $300, basically, on this one. Buy it now. This isn't a huge category. You're not going to see these all the time. But you, you'll be surprised at how often you can find some of these. Just for the simple fact, most people think they're trashed or there's nothing you can do with them. Cover up the name when you sell it and just go ahead and list it. That's what, what I've done. Uh, we sell them regardless. They're very collectible. These American Express black credit cards are extremely uh, collected, something that pretty much everybody wants if they collect this type of thing. There are credit card collectors who have hundreds, maybe even thousands of, of charge cards in general. Ritz-Carlton had their own specific. Uh, this is a newer one, too. It's deactivated. It's actually made out of metal, as some of these better ones are. $269. Uh, platinum. This is an early, well, I wouldn't say early, but it's a, a very nice one. It has the chip in it, so that's one of the distinguishing factors. Uh, $135 for that one. Here's an 84, 1984, something you could easily find in a storage lock or just thrown in at estate sale in big box lots. I've thrown away many in the past before I realized it had a value, in all honesty. $124 for this one. And again, it's 80s. This is 84. I've even seen 90 ones still sell and 2000 occasionally. Uh, next one here, Master Charge uh, from 1972. 100 bucks, 19 bids. It's classical. This is, I could see why this would be collected. If you collect cards or anything else, it has nice graphics on the back. It's colored to match the front. Rather interesting card in my book. I enjoy stuff like this anyway. 
something you're going to hunt. It's the thrill of hunting these down sometimes that can add to you actually finding these. Some of these are paper. I believe this one's paper cardboard here. And that's another reason why people don't list these or you just don't see them up. Eh, it's just a piece of paper, some junky restaurant. I'm just going to trash it. The original ones, the, the first ones out were paper. Some of them were even like punch cards where you could get so much and things along that line. So there's many avenues of this. This is a specific restaurant chain as well. $169.99. Diners Club here, 1978. Uh, 70 bucks. The graphics on this one are, are very nice. Block out the numbers, block out the information so no one can tell. And you're, you're fairly safe on selling any of these items online without issue. I, I've never had an issue on any of these. Because I know that's been a question. I've had people ask if you can do this. It, as long as they're expired, defunct, you know, technically the company had owned them at, at some specific given point. So this one's not even filled out. So who knows? It might just be a, an unauthorized... Sometimes people don't activate them, so they just sit in there, and, and you know that's how they turn up. Forty-eight dollars on this one, and as I said, there's not a lot to show you. you. You just look for them. Anything that says credit card or looks like a charge card, I pull up and, and dig up into. If you can't find a price, this is one of those categories where I would, if it's an American Express black or something like that card, you can kind of guess the price on this. But if they're paper ones, I almost always put those up as auctions. And those are one of the rare instances that I recommend auctions over anything else because some of these collectors are nuts over them and they'll, they'll just shoot through the roof on something to get that card. So even if it's a little tiny paper or cardboard card or even the booklet, as you saw in the beginning, for $2,000. This is 800 for a pair, matching pair. It's a business and a, a non-business, a personal, from the same person as the gist on this one here, which is unique. Here's a paper one. Now, this one's the Beverly Hills Hotel. It's, it's a courtesy card, but it's got a number on it. This just lets you know what it is, basically. They don't all have to say credit card, and that's why some people miss them as well, too. They just think it's some stupid room courtesy um, card, but it's literally to charge money to your room. It's a charge card. Beverly Hills Hotel is very famous. It's very popular. A lot of the hotels had them, so you can run into hotel ones um, from like travel brochures mixed in there with them too as well. 150 bucks for that one. Here's carte blanche. Uh, two of them, 1973. $73, four bids. They might have done better on these just because it's a known one. It's not some scarce or oddball one. I remember the old uh, carte blanche TV commercials they had back in the day in the 70s and stuff. And uh, they could have probably sold them separately for about the same. Put them up as a bin, $95. Took 70 maybe, uh, if you're lucky, on individual ones. I, I would have honestly figured they could have got 30 or 40 more bucks easily out of these had they sold them separately. But you never know. You know, everything's potluck sometimes these days. Now, here's an early Apple computers, you know, where you could charge to the company. Uh, let's say you're in purchasing. That's that's what you would get here. These are very limited. It doesn't go for a huge amount of money, 160 bucks basically. But anything like this, I would nab up in a second. Uh, these show up in California. I've never seen one in person, actually. Only the ones on here that I've, I see. And, and sometimes there'll be two or three of them up because they made thousands of these over the years from what I see. You can just tell by some of the numbers. Plus, you know, the, the staff had them across all the upper big wigs and things. They show up at garage sales even, from what I understand. I've seen other sellers who, who've talked about finding them that way. So anyway, that's what I have. It's just a small uh, topic here. It's a small niche, but it's one that most people, and I do mean most people, just pass by. They think nothing of these type of materials, just like phone cards. Phone cards can be collected and are, you know, high price ones as well, too, like prepaid phone cards. And I may touch on that in another video here as well, because I love cards and small items that fit in this small area that easy to sell, easy to ship, you know, easy to photograph. Uh, but that's what we have today. Well, there you go. There's another item that we do look for pretty much wherever we go. It's not going to show up all the time, but when it does, as I've said, it is worth a lot of money. Uh, but that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.